Hello, friends, and welcome to the Home Record Podcast. You know what this is. This is where we wreck and shatter conventional wisdom and ways of thinking by bringing about alternative viewpoints and different subjects to light in an attempt to not only change the thoughts and feelings that most people accept as reality. No, here we attempt to obliterate them completely. I'm your host, formerly known as the Golden Greek. I'm Alex, joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing wife, the lovely Monique. Hello. Hi. I thought you were going to say formerly known as my trophy. Formerly known wife. as my trophy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Hold on. Hold on a second. So, how are you doing? I love how we always start the show with that. And it's like, obviously, I know how you're doing. We're, yes. We're married. We live together. I've thought of that many but, times as we yeah, do that for well, the show. But it's just it's so much you guys know how we're doing. It's just what we do. I, I get to ask people. I feel like the past few weeks have been really draining. And everyone I've spoken to have said, yes, the past few weeks, very draining, very tired, zero energy. Have you been feeling that? Me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I know why. It's because I don't sleep. Well, this is true. I so, do. I do sleep. I, I don't. I, yeah, I have a very difficult time going to sleep, falling asleep. Well, falling asleep is not a problem. It's staying asleep. Mm-hmm. And then once I wake up, it's very difficult to fall back asleep. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I have been not feeling as uh, energetic lately, though, more so than normal, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, we, we have those little, uh, the little uh, fitness tracker gimmicks that we wear. And they track your steps and stuff, right? So you have like a daily step goal. And for the longest time, I was hitting my step goal, like no problem. And then, yeah, the last couple of weeks just been like, uh, I know I've been crushing like... you on that. I never beat Alex in steps <laughs> for whenever Fitbit came out and we first started using oh, you're it. You're going to put over the name. Okay. Well, that's what it's, it's what it is. So I'm not, I call it a fitness tracker because I don't want to give them any free advertising. Okay. Well, Anyway, anywho, the fitness tracker, since we've been doing that, he crushes me every week. They send an email because we're friends on there so we can see like who took more steps. He kills me. And then finally, the past few weeks, I've been crushing it. It might only be by like 3000 steps, but I'm still in the lead, which makes me feel good about myself. (laughs) I'm going to admit. All right. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) But, But yeah, when you when you. When you mentioned that, yeah, that's that's been the past few weeks. It's just been kind of like, uh, yeah, it, having it, to re- literally drag myself. You know, like I, I work out in uh in our home gym, and I have to like drag myself to go down there some days. These past few weeks, it's just been like, uh, yeah, I haven't missed any workouts, but still, just I've been working, pain. yeah, and I've been working on. Putting things off to the side, I'm the kind of person I have to do something right away or I forget to do it because I'm just, we're so busy. And lately, I always see people who like, they don't get back to an email sometimes for weeks, won't get back to a text for a while because they're taking the time for themselves. And that's something I've been striving for to say, no, I don't have to write somebody back right away. I don't have to do this right away. I'm going to take time for myself. I need it, especially the past few weeks where my energies felt more drained. Um, And I haven't been able to meditate as much. I might do it for like a couple minutes before I get up in the morning or before I go to bed. But like my really deep meditations, I just haven't been able to do it because we've been so busy. And I was like, I need to start prioritizing myself again and working on that. So taking time for myself to meditate longer and more, taking time for myself where I'll put the computer away and say, and say to myself, I don't have to do this right now. Let me do something for myself instead. And, and just working more on my own self-care because all I do is tell people, I go on other podcasts talking about hypnotherapy and telling people how important self-care is. But this past year has been so chaotic that as much as I try to take time for self-care for myself, I haven't been doing it as much as I used to. And I've noticed a difference in myself. So I'm like, okay, things are starting to stabilize more. 
I am taking that time for myself. And I'm very lucky because my husband is incredible in understanding that it's important. And, you know, I, I know there are some couples out there where they'll get grief. Oh, you know, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that. But I'm very lucky, Alex, that you, you get it. And I appreciate that. All right. Yeah. I mean, you have to take, if you can't, it's, it always comes back to the whole thing when you're flying in the plane and they tell you, make sure if the masks come down, put yours on first, then help the person next to you or whatever. Yeah. Cause if you're helping someone else and then you lose oxygen, you're dead or, or whatever, you know, but that's the thing. Yeah. How are you supposed to take care of somebody else? If you have not taken care of yourself first, it's kind of common sense, but for whatever reason, humans, some, most, I don't know the number, but I know for myself and I know for you, we tend to put things off for ourselves to help others yeah. first. And I mean, yeah, you know, when you have kids and stuff like that, it changes your, the dynamic of everything because yeah, you want to make sure your children are taken care of first. Uh, but it's it still, it, it, it's so important. Like you have to be mindful of your, yourself and how your health is and if you're not eating the, the right foods or good foods and getting exercise or whatever like how are you supposed to take care of anybody else like how do you take care of a kid or how do you take care of the, your elderly parents your grandparents whatever the case may be how do you take care of somebody else if you're not taking care of yourself and i've said it before you cannot give from an empty cup very good analogy yeah. and it was like my cup probably only had a few drops in it and I realized that, hey, I, I got to fill my cup up before I can give to anybody else. So I've been working on that. And it's very challenging for me because I am a get it done kind of person. And we, a few years ago, did human design. Uh, Michelle Johnston, she is, uh, she does human design. She's awesome. I heard her on our friend Karen Rontowski's podcast, Paranormal Karen. And so we reached out to her and we each did a session with her and I discovered she's a, she's a past guest on our show too. Yes. And she's, well, we reached out, we did a session, then we had her on as a guest on our show. I was trying to go in chronological order, uh -huh. but so I realized that I am a three, five projector, which basically means for myself, I don't operate like everyone else does projectors they can't go, 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 go and work 40 hours a week. It's more of a maybe five hours a day kind of thing instead of eight or 10. And it's just the way we are. And the three part of it is I have to learn by doing. Uh, I have to, it's it's called the martyr, but it's like, and I read like this great analogy um, on a website where it was like, you're walking and there's a hole in the ground. And somebody else might just walk around the hole, but you have to go in the hole. And then you come back up and you talked about what the hole was like and everything you learned inside of the hole, because that is like, that's how I am. I need to do things. And if I can't do it myself to find out for myself, I feel like uh, I can't explain it, but it's, it's very unsettling for me. Like how many times have you tried something? And I say, Alex, just please let me try it. Like, I know you've done it. You're saying it can't be done, but just let me try. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't know. You, you want a number? No, <laughs> I'm just saying though, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's the fact that I tried. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that has happened before where, uh, where you've asked to try something after I've done it and said, I can't do it. It's impossible. And you come in and you do it. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mind. And I think it's because I have so many different perspectives from everything that I've done in my life. And again, we go, 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 and I'm not meant for that. And so that's why I'm trying to get back to what I need for myself. And with the three, five projector I, and the three being like having to do things for yourself and learn from that, I think of jack of all trades. And how how often do you hear a jack of all trades in a negative way? Well, it's because when it's followed up in a negative way, it's jack of all trades, master, master of, of none. none. Yeah, and and, yeah. and that's usually kind of how it's put: is jack of all trades, master of none. And I look at that like that's actually like how many people out there are a jack of all trades? They know so much about so much. Now they don't know everything about everything, 
but it's a lot. And I feel like all that does is it helps you as a person grow and learn and then have the ability to teach others what you have learned. We should change that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it right now, and it's literally just popped in my head. Instead of it being jack of all trades, it should be, and master of none, it should be jack of all trades, master of one. And the one being yourself. Oh, I love that. That's who. That's who. That's what you should be a master of. You should master yourself. I was and, thinking you know. master of puppets. <laughs> We've been listening to there, Metallica today. Um, no, I like that. Jack of all trades. Master, master of, of one, one. The one being yourself. I love that. Yeah, I mean that's how it should be. Like, it's just you know I, I don't know. Like so what? Somebody knows a lot of things. I remember the first time I heard that that jack of all trades, master of none. I think I, I was uh, working at, I was a teenager and I was working at a grocery store and I was in the produce department and somebody used it as like an insult. And I'm just like, that's usually it, how oh, it's used. So that's an insult. Oh, oh, okay. But like, but this guy can do a lot of stuff. Why is it? Because he hasn't mastered one thing. That's a but bad the thing. thing. Is, it was, it was can, weird. Yeah. You can just... master things and then go on and master other things. It's this mentality. And I feel it's part of the programming of where, no, you have to focus your entire life on one thing, your studies, you get out of high school and you go to college on this one thing and learn about this one thing. And it it's so like line driven, like straight line, very linear. And it's like, how do you enjoy life doing that? And there are some people where that's their jam and that's awesome, but that's not me. I am the kind of person when I go for a walk, I am looking, I'm taking everything in. I'm looking at the trees, the rocks, the ground, the sky. I want to take it all in and experience it and enjoy it. And that's how I feel in life. Like I want to experience things and enjoy it and get different point of views and perspectives because for me, it gives me that opportunity to in a sense, become a better person where instead of being so narrow-minded about something, saying, hey, this is how I feel on this, but what's wrong with learning other ways of things? You might not know what you could end up liking. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that it's really important that you get rid of that negative mindset that, you know, negative jack of all trades, master of none mindset where it's used to be insulting. Yeah. And I mean, it could be that that's just how I've always heard it and taken it like in a negative way, because that's how it, it always came off to me. Maybe it's not meant as an insult when people say it to others. I don't I don't know. But it just it seems like kind of like, OK, why? Yeah. Why, why is it bad to be to, to know how to do or involved in a lot of things i, I don't know i, I it, whatever it's just kind of weird but yeah so we're changing it we're taking it back yeah, taking jack it back. of all trades master, master of, of one one b and if anybody self. says what does that mean well the one is myself yeah that's it and if you don't get it then if you don't enjoy get the it, journey of learning about it that's it yeah and, and i like how you were saying like having to be at you know learning things from different perspectives and being open-minded and everything because yeah like how else are you supposed to get how this world works how else are you supposed to know how to interact with people what makes people tick like you really want to know what's going on you have to talk to people you have to see things from their point of view yeah not just your own because your own point of view is is so narrow and it's just your point of view like you have to see how are why do people feel a certain way about a certain topic why do people act a certain way about certain things? Like you have to see things from other people's perspective. It's just if you're not doing that, then you're you're shortchanging yourself. And I'm gonna throw in there not just people, but nature. I mean, think about like the life of a seed growing into a tree or a plant. Think about animals, insects, everything in like their perspective of what it's like for them. I don't know. That's just where my mind goes. Like not just people, but everything how oxygen, the trees make oxygen and all these crazy things. It's like, there's so much to learn about. And that's one thing with this show that I feel like we hit so many different topics because we're curious, we're interested. We want to know more about it. Let's look into this or let's share our thoughts about it. Yeah, and it started off doing a lot of stuff that was interesting at the time that interested us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that we don't talk about a lot of conspiracies and all that kind of stuff anymore is because 
what else is there to say about it really you know like everything you said has for the most part come true anything yeah if you're looking at the way the world is now you go back and listen to some of our early stuff you go oh oh yeah okay like what am i going to talk about now the fact that i was right about so many things that happened like what are we going to say i don't that's not i don't care It, it i and also just the fact that we've we change as people we the things we like change the things that we care about change our priorities change you know and that's part of the wonderful thing that that is being a human being and having a human experience you the ability to change the ability to change your mind the ability to evolve to think greater to think bigger to i don't know just yeah evolve like i said i don't know it, so that's why if anybody that's listening is wondering what well, how come there's many conspiracy shows or anything like that like well because really like and honestly, the older I've gotten and the more I've looked into these things and the more my mind has developed and the more I've been critically thinking about certain things and asking certain questions, you realize how much of that stuff is just bullshit. Mm-hmm. It was just all just stories that are made up and people that were selling those stories grifting around, you know, for it just, I don't know. It's uh, it's I, I, I've fallen back into my my main interest lately has been pro wrestling again just obviously I, I can't physically be involved in it anymore but i still now i i find myself enjoying it again and and kind of immersing myself and listening to like wrestling podcasts again and stuff like that because that's that's stuff i i know it i know what it is and it's for me enjoyable and entertaining and it didn't break my heart the way that some of these other things that i, I followed and and looked into where my imagination was captivated and taken over and I would think about certain things. And then when you realize a lot of this stuff is just made up and it's bullshit, it's government disinformation, misinformation, all that stuff. It's like, what? Well, I don't want to feed into that shit. I don't want to give my energy to that shit. And what's interesting so. is we, we, so we had this conversation um, a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned uh, we saw our, our friend Karen Rontowski. She yeah. was in Massachusetts and driving home we got into a conversation about this stuff, how it's kind of like, we've gone through it. You know, we've looked into it. We've done all this work. We've learned a lot. And it's almost like we're back where we are, but different. And I said, it's like the fool's journey in tarot. You start with zero, the fool, and you go through all the major arcana. And then it's like, you go through everything and you come back to zero. It's still the fool, but the fool has been on this incredible journey, learning so much where it's still the same person, but so much has changed. So where he's kind of almost stepping off the cliff, it's no longer being naive and not knowing anything and and just not knowing better. It's having that faith inside because he's been through so much where now it's like, I have faith. I can take this step and it will be okay. And that's what came into my mind, having that discussion. And as you said that, it's what popped in my head again. Like we kind of gone through it all. We're always open to looking into things and researching. But even in the past, when you would go down these rabbit holes, Alex, Mm -hmm. I remember I went based off my feeling, my gut feeling. And I never, you know, would tell you you're crazy. I'd always listen to you. Mm -hmm. And I took everything that you said in like it with much importance, but I went by the feeling and am I going to worry about this stuff? And I wouldn't because I didn't get a bad feeling about it. If I got a bad feeling about something, it was like, okay, let's prepare it. Let's get ready. And that's one thing like I've tried to keep in touch with. And there's certain things that come up where I get a feeling like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And we need to be prepared for certain things. And I think that you know, at the end of the day, you just have to go with what feels right for you. Go with your gut. And I know I say that all the time, but it's because I think it's important. It is. Yeah, it absolutely is. If you don't trust your gut and and the feeling that you're getting, what do you trust? And one of the things like we at Karen show um, in Massachusetts, it was in North Hampton. What did, what was it that you spotted right away when we got there and went to our seats? Oh, okay. So we're we're seated in this. It's a little theater. It's about seated what eight hundred people, I, I think, think, is so. what they said. 
uh, and it was packed and, and we were, our seats were in the very, very last row of the balcony. And it was, I actually enjoyed it. It was awesome. Cause it was, like I said, a small theater. So it wasn't, it wasn't like it was a bad seat or anything. But we, there's nobody behind us. We're in the absolute last row. You can see all. Of so you can see front of everybody us, in front of you because you know it's it's the balcony and and elevated. You know every seat, the rows are elevated and, uh, ascendingly. And so we're at the very top, looking down, and all I see, looking out, because we get there and it was pretty full. It like not everybody was there yet, but it was pretty full. And then as it got closer and closer to showtime, it it filled up pretty quick. And I'm just looking out. All you see is people on their fucking cell phones. Mm -hmm. That's it. Nobody is talking to each other. Like very few. I should say nobody. But it was like the majority. Like I'll seats. say I'll say like 85% of the crowd had a phone out and was either texting or I don't know looking what at looking at something or whatever. Like and it was just like I looked I turned and looked at you and I said, this is why we're fucked. <laughs> This is why, because look at this. Nobody talks anymore. Nobody talks to each other. You are there with somebody, most likely, right? Most most people go to an event, a concert, sporting event, comedy show. You're going with somebody, whether it be a friend, a loved one, a girlfriend, whatever. You're going with someone, and you're not talking to that person. You're not talking to the person next to you, maybe that you don't know, but just say, hey, are you excited for the show? How you doing? I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. You know? That is, is gone. Like, that just doesn't happen. And it, I looked at you and I said, this is why we're fucked. Nobody yeah. talks to anybody anymore. It's crazy. It's, just, it's insane. It was like right before the show began, um, there were a lot of people standing behind our back row. Like, well, the, we were like right on the, uh, what do you call the it? The aisle. The aisle. So we had, like, I had the end seat and you were right next to me. And there were people that were coming up, but I don't know if they just, I don't, I don't know if they sold extra tickets for standing room or what. I don't know because it's almost like you could walk behind the last row of seats. It's not like you we could were yeah, it wasn't a walk. It wasn't a lot of space, but there was a room enough where you could walk behind the last row of seats. But yeah, it, it was didn't, probably like a foot and a half, maybe. Yeah, but it didn't on. like go anywhere. It wasn't like it just went around to the other. It just edge went of the to seat. the other edge of the seats, but but the other edge of the seats, like those people didn't have an aisle. Yeah, like they had to. If you were on the no, on they that, did. did they? Yeah, they did. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. All right. Never mind. Stay corrected. But anyway, uh, it, there was, um, were you going to talk about the guy that came up yeah. and just started talking? Yeah, go ahead. So as the show, like we're waiting for the show to begin and this guy was standing basically ne kind of next to Alex a little behind him and he just started talking and bringing up conversation. Yeah, he just started shooting the, shooting the shit with me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And just like that, yeah, just talking. And it, it was a guy, you could tell he was a little older than us. Mm -hmm. And just talking, you could, he'd had a couple of drinks, you could tell. <laughs> but, you he know, he's just guy. talking and, and explaining how, oh, it, what, what was he talking about? Like, he, he was supposed to be sitting closer up, but now he doesn't have a seat or something like that. That's no, why I said. he had a seat, but he didn't really like it. Oh, he didn't like his seat. So he, he came. He wanted, like, he, he was wanted trying to get our seat. Like, he was trying to get seat. our seats. That's what it was. He was trying, yeah, he was trying to schmoz us and, and schmooze with us, excuse me, to, uh, to get one of our seats and yeah. i'm just like oh man no like sorry dude no i'm, I'm here with my wife like we're, we're not getting up yeah no I mean, we like our seats was, we're good <laughs> i mean at the like once it began i, I think every seat was filled there yeah it was so, it was some, sold out yeah. they said it was sold out yeah and i think and i think yeah there was standing room only so they did sell a couple extra seats or whatever but yeah but yeah this guy just came, and then and he did that and started talking to us like maybe a couple of minutes after i said you were fucked this is why yeah and i was like oh and then after he left i was like oh finally we actually like got somebody to talk to us that's amazing this that is was, great to me, <laughs> it was I nice thought it was great because that's yeah. how you get to meet other people yeah. and talk to them we made and... small talk after after yeah. i after i uh, shot down his uh, trying to get our seats we talked for like another couple of minutes like and he, he was funny it was like it was fine it was it was great like yeah. oh cool See, people, people can still have conversations and talk. Apparently, no, don't be afraid to talk to strangers. <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. if you're an adult. Yeah. If you're but, out at a, a common like a function, you're all there for the same purpose. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but know. geez, in, in that theater that night, I, I, I just wow. But I feel like so many people are more shut in now. Screwed. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's the thing. Everybody just talks on the phone. I mean, for example, like my father, 
who is 25 years my senior, doesn't call ever. He texts now. And it's to me, that's the weirdest thing. And I and he 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 actually said to me, "Why does it take you so long to text me back?" I'm like, "Because I don't look at my phone as often as you do, I guess. I don't know." And and I mean, I'm horrible about getting back to people anyway. But it's not because I'm ignoring them or whatever. It's because I'm not attached. I don't, I, I don't look at my phone every two seconds of the day. Like I'm doing other things. You mean you're living your life? I'm trying to anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's just it's just crazy how much the the technology has has taken over our culture, our society, and it's some would say for the better. I would argue, no, not necessarily so. There are aspects of technology that have made life better, but I think in in more ways than not, it's actually gotten worse overall. Well, again, we I've talked about it before in previous episodes, but. People are basically being packed like sardines, either in apartments or condos or even houses. You buy like this McMansion that's huge. It'll be like 5,000 square feet. The thing is freaking huge. And then you have like the tiniest little yard and your neighbor is a stone's throw away. It's like you have no land and we're all being packed in. And yet instead of being a community with each other, talking to each other, working with each other, helping each other, looking out for each other. We all just close into our homes, pull the curtains, go on our computers and our phones, and we keep to ourselves. So many people, I mean, you see it all the time in neighborhoods. They don't look out for each other, but they'll call the police if they see something like, oh, this looks suspicious. And it's like their neighbor doing something not suspicious at all. I, I heard this one police department got a call because a neighbor, they, they said that somebody was riding dirt bikes down their road and it was their neighbor, school was out and their kid was driving a Power Wheels in the driveway. <laughs> and it's like, look out your freaking window, but people won't even look out the window. And it's just, it's so easy to assume things. But, like, get out there. Talk to each other. I mean, when we lived in Manchester, we talked to our neighbors. We started, uh, my cousin and I did, like, a community um, neighborhood watch program. And it was more so just to, like, get to know our neighbors better and say, hey, let's look out for each other. Up here now, we know our neighbors. We take care of each other. We help each other. That's how it should be, at least in my eyes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. That's how it should be. Like, why? Why wouldn't you? And I want to shift gears a little bit talking about being up here now because I want to talk about food and the price of food and how expensive it's gotten and like growing food because I feel like people have been hit so hard with the cost of groceries becoming sky high. Okay. What do you want to, what do you want to talk about? So I've been growing food for a few years now. And I'm trying, I've been learning as I go a lot of it and how much of what I need to grow to get enough for us. And we've said it before, I think it was the homesteading episode Mm -hmm. where you have to have, you have to grow a lot of food depending on how many people you're feeding. But for a family of five or a family of seven, like growing one or two like green bean plants isn't going to be enough for everybody. That's enough for maybe a dinner. (laughs) Yeah. So... (laughs) Yeah, like for a meal, yeah. and you each get a little that's, bit. That's so you, you have to grow a lot of food, and I've been learning that. And I feel if everyone can start growing their own food, that is huge. But something happened this year, and it was really frustrating. So I'm using our lettuce grow to start my seedlings. So instead of planting the seeds outside where I run a higher risk of you know animals and birds getting to it, I get it established inside. I go out and then I plant it in my garden. And so I did that. I waited for the last frost. Okay, all signs are clear that no more cold, no more frost, which took until about May up here. And I get everything. I think it was like early May. I get everything planted. And then was it the end of May? We got a frost overnight. Yeah. So many people's crops their trees, their gardens got destroyed by this all of a sudden frost, this random frost. And it fortunately, my plants made it, 
but it's stunted their growth. It's taking longer for them to grow. And I'm thinking, okay, now we definitely need a greenhouse to extend the growing season. I don't necessarily need something like heated during the winter, but just something so I can plant earlier and, you know, just have everything grow a little bit longer. But our neighbor, her peach trees, they got killed. Like they're not going to grow. They're not going to grow this year because of the frost. It destroyed it. I think our apple trees are going to make it. They look pretty good. But I mean, a a lot of stuff got killed. And then it's like, well. Yeah, my dad was saying the same thing. Yeah. A lot of his trees. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, now we have to make green a greenhouse or go buy a greenhouse. And it's it's almost like it's becoming more difficult to grow your own food. At, I mean, at least up here. And the price of food is becoming so expensive. And it's like, well, how do you win? And I don't really know the answer to that. But, you know, I still think if you can start growing your own food, you're still at an advantage. That's the answer. If you have the space, you can get indoor greenhouses. So we have one for our basement that we were using for a while. And I think I'm going to reestablish it again um, just to kind of have some stuff. I want to I want to grow a few trees. I want to get a peach tree growing so I can get it big enough to plant it maybe next year. Um, but I, I think you really just need to keep, you know, keep planting, keep growing your own food. If you can get or make your own greenhouse, that's huge. The the problem is you're giving advice for people that maybe don't have a yard. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. If you have the space, grow inside. Yeah. Well, that if you have the space, but that, and that's where, again, this is, uh, (laughs) it's not a conspiracy, but we've been pushed to this now for the last 60 70 years where society has been molded and shaped in a certain way uh-huh. and now we're seeing we're going to see a lot of people having a hard time yeah and a lot of people are not going to make it sad to say I it's mean, not it's not going to happen because and- people were, have not prepared for this because people have been conditioned to think that well, there's always going to be food there's always going to be a grocery store there's always going to be this that the other thing Got news for you. If 2020 didn't wake people up, mm. they're, 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 there's no hope. There's no hope for them. If 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 2020 and all and everything that's happened since has not woken you up, then uh, it was nice knowing you. No, I know. I mean, we've been saying this for a few years, like trying to be like, this is what we're learning. Yeah. Um, and it, and I mean, it is... and we're still so far behind. Like, oh, I mean. Yeah. No matter how much we try to catch up, it, it's it, like there's always an obstacle. And yeah. of course, We said, like, we're not getting into conspiracies, but, you know, my conspiracy mind is they've admitted to weather, the government's admitted weather manipulation to, you know, not not only have they admitted to weather manipulation, sorry to cut you off, but just recently they came out and said that they're going to start regulating chemtrails. So they're now admitting that there's chemtrails and they're going to start regulating them. We did a show on that last summer, didn't we? Yes, we did. Chemtrails, chemtrails everywhere. And this just came out. Like a couple of days ago, yeah. I saw this. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And it's like, we're already up against what they're spraying in the sky. Yeah. And now, and, and I thought, is this what they're doing? Are they doing weather, weather modification? It's absolutely. To screw people out of their ab- crops. Of course, that's what's going on. These exactly. are manufactured food shortages yeah. that are happening. They've been telling us they're going to be happening for years. Mm-hmm. And, and this is not an accident. And this is why I personally, for us, for our family, have been preparing for that because i know it's coming we've you've been told everybody they they been now they're now that they've started reporting on the mainstream news from what i've seen the little snippets here and there that i've seen and when it, when it's on the mainstream news it's it's gonna happen it's it's just a matter of time oh, yeah. before and what's gonna happen is once it's on the news oh food shortages or whatever remember toilet paper in 2020 everyone once it got reported on the news there's a toilet paper shortage everybody went to the to the store to get toilet paper and it was gone guess what's going to happen when they say there's food shortages everybody's going to run out to the store and the grocery stores bj sam's club costco they're all going to be wiped out yep to be wiped out and supplies i mean even during 2020 it's gonna be grocery supplies were so limited 
And, you know, it was interesting because what I learned at one of the supermarkets we went to was different stuff was getting shipped on different days and they, it was taking a while for shipments to come in. So shelves might look bare because they just got a shipment in and people took it right off the shelves more than normal because normally it would last for so long until the next shipment or the shipment was delayed or they changed the day. So stuff used to come, certain things would come on a Tuesday. Now it's on a Thursday. So when you regularly go food shopping on Wednesday. Yeah, most people go the same already. day every week. I, yeah. At least that's how I, I, I always would go the same yeah. time every week when throughout my life. You always go like the same day or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Because, you know, you work in your schedule. Right. And so trying to realize how much of it wasn't really an issue because I'd go back like a couple of days later when they said they were getting a shipment and stuff would be there. So it wasn't as bad. But again, when you manufacture these things and you manipulate information, people are going to run out. They're going to go buy stuff. And yes, have some backup, you know, have some rice, have some meat in a freezer if you can, have some stuff. I would say have a depending on how much space you have, have at least a month of food. Yeah. At least a month. For each at, person. At the very least. The very least. But, I mean, obviously, if you want to, I mean, I'm not saying get a bunker full of food, although that wouldn't hurt you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you want to have at least a month of food, I would say, is, is the safe. That's a safe, conservative analysis. But be more liberal with how much you, you can stockpile and have on hand. And, and obviously, you want to have non-perishables, uh, more so than perishables, because what if they start doing brownouts and yeah. blackouts and things like that? What if that happens? Because you don't think that's coming. Oh, they've, they've been they've it. been conditioning us for that now for the last couple of years too. Yeah. Reporting on that, come on. Like so, if you don't have solar power or generators, you want to make sure that any food you do have is is non perishable, so that you can actually survive and something you can look into is curing meat so if you don't have extra freezer refrigerator space look into curing meat so that way you have the meat it's cured it's a way to preserve it canning canning is huge and that's something that i started with the food from our garden is learning how to can so we can you know have it for another point in time yeah it, you know and the other thing too is when you are taking food and you're setting it aside should something happen keep in mind everything does eventually come with an expiration date yes, of course. so you do have to kind of go through it and eat it so don't buy food that is you're not wicked gonna... cheap but because it's canned <laughs> don't be like well you know an emergency i'll eat anything because you're pro you might have to end up eating it you know and then restocking well that's stuff. well that's the whole point though you you want to buy stuff that you're going to eat yeah uh, you don't want to fill your pantry or, or whatever with uh, things that you don't like yeah. just to say that you have it. Yeah. It's kind of point. You, you want stuff that you want to uh, actually eat. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, like I, uh, the, the big thing, I think the best thing, the smartest thing that I, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion and for my taste, stocking up on like pasta. Cause you can, I mean, you can eat that plain. You can, you know, just, you just need boiling water. You can eat that plain. Uh, of course, I just said non-perishables, and if there's no power, how are you going to boil your water? Well, I mean, you can always start a fire or something, you know, yeah. if you need to, depending on on start your living outside. your living situation, you know. So, so that's why something like pasta is is a smart thing. If you have like a wood stove or a pellet stove that gets hot enough, um, that like you can cook on it. Yeah. So, like, boil the water on that. You know, yeah. get a fire going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean, and pastas relatively inexpensive mm -hmm. uh, compared to a lot of other you know foods and, and stuff rice like that. too rice also another one but the, the problem with those two is that they're not very nutritionally dense yes. so you can eat a box of spaghetti and you'll be hungry in an hour and a half or so because there's really not a lot of nutritional value there but what, like, it, what it will do is it'll keep you full same thing with rice but even like canned tuna you know that's good for a while so that's something you can yeah. add to the yeah, rice. Beans or a lot, a lot, like when you, you talk about people that do a lot of prepping and preppers yeah. and that kind of thing, beans are a big one because of the nutritional content because there's a lot of protein there. Uh, the, the caloric density is a little more so than like a, just a rice or a pasta. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why when you have people that have pasta, they'll have it with like a sauce, some kind of a sauce or something else, or they have it with you know chicken or whatever, 
you make dishes with it, but stock up on, on those kind of things, because sadly I, I fear that soon enough, you're probably going to be needing to, to dig into those kind of things. Cause I don't think the choices are going to be there. Like they have been for us. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things my gut feeling, which is why I kind of wanted, when I was talking about go with your gut, that's something my gut is telling me, like it's coming. I don't know when it's coming, but something is coming. And I feel like some people are going to go by pretty unfazed and some people it's really going to hit hard. Yeah, agreed. And I think that the people that are going to be relatively unfazed are people that can see that it's coming. They're, they're ready for it. Uh, anybody that has land that is making use of that land by growing food, by having livestock, by having animals so that they have, th that's the biggest thing, folks, is your food. Once your food source is is disrupted in any way, you're you're discombobulated. You're screwed. If you don't have a way to eat or to feed those that that rely on you, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, what do they say? It, it uh, society is two or three meals away from complete collapse. I forget the exact quote, but it's something like that. Because think about it. If you're told all of a sudden grocery stores are empty, there's nothing, you're screwed. What What's going to happen? Are people gonna just going to sit in their houses and starve? No, they're going to start going around and beating down the doors of their neighbors. What do you have for food? Give me food. You know, that's the shit that's going to start happening. And well, like I said, a lot of people aren't going to make it. it it's uh, if, if it comes to that, I, I really hope it doesn't. I really hope thing, that like, my feeling and don't and, want that to happen. No, of course not. I really hope I'm wrong about all that. I really hope that you don't listen to this 10 years from now and go, wow, that guy was right. No, I hope, I hope he can listen and go, well, what the fuck was that guy thinking? Tinfoil hat, weird conspiracy. I hope that's what I want to say to the, the tarot. I've been doing tarot, like the things coming up in the year. I was on Karen Rontowski's show um, last year in December, talking about this year. And the big stuff seems to be coming in the second half of the year. So we're getting closer to it. And what it feels like, because we were, I think back in May, I redid a lot of the stuff kept coming up the same. I feel like there's a possible timeline shift where it could go either way. And I don't know which way it's going to go. And I, really don't know until it happens there's a way where it's going to be pretty good for everybody for the most part and things will work out and then there's going to be like a really shitty thing going on and i'm really hoping the good the good timeline shift happens um but it, it, it everything i got was dependent upon how we as people react and how we go forward with things oh well i, I have no faith in in humanity I, I don't have, if it, if something big happens and it depends on how we react, we're going to react the wrong way, not in the way that's beneficial to us. Cause 2020 proved that for me. Oh, people are like the squirrel, 2020 a car's running out me. and it stops and goes like the other way and stops. And then like decides I'm going to go in front of the car and get hit. So many people that I admired, respected, uh, I won't say looked up to, cause I don't really look up to people. I never really have, but people that I admired or respected. So many people, 2020, just made me go, what? Are you are you serious? Are you really falling for this BS? You're really going along with this BS? So many people. And that's why, I mean, I lost touch with a lot of people because I, I just can't believe so many people fell for that nonsense. And, and yeah, I, I have no faith that if something critical, when it does happen, I have no faith that humanity is going to do the right thing. And the reason I have no faith is because I've already been proven. It's already been proven that we're not going to do the right thing. Well, one could argue they learn the lesson from that. So when the next nah. thing comes up, maybe they'll say, hey, nah. again, maybe there's more three fives out there. I like to be optimistic. That learn from going through it. I like to be optimistic, but I have no faith. Zero. Uh, I have faith in myself and in my family. And that's it. I have no faith in anybody, in anybody else to do the right thing. You can look now, people are going to listen and go, what a dick, what an asshole. Oh, I'm, I'm saying just because 2020 proved to me, people don't think they don't. I, I, I always knew it, but I, it was solidified. Like it was proven. And believe me, the people that pulled that shit off are the ones that are going to be doing the next big thing. And they know we got them, whatever we want to do, they're going to accept it. Yeah. 
So if you're not a person who has prepared for this, if you're not a person that has taken action to prepare for this and to set up a, an alternative economy, take part in an alternative economy by getting into cryptocurrencies, if you haven't started growing your own food, if you haven't started trying to figure out ways to become energy independent by going to solar and figuring that kind of stuff out, then I'm sorry, but you're at the mercy of whatever comes next. And I'm just, it's just gonna, how it is. I'm going to circle back to what we first started talking about. This is why it's good to be a jack of all trades, master of one, because you're Absolutely. learning, you know, learn about solar power. You know, you don't have to spend 30 to $50,000 to get solar set up for your home. There are ways you can do it for less money. Look into it, do the research. You can grow your own food, make it work. People have vertical gardens where you don't have space, but you can do things vertically to get stuff to grow. There's all different ways to utilize the space that you have. You know, if you live in a tiny apartment, you can still grow some stuff and something's better than nothing. And, you know, learning about, okay, well, how can I be better prepared? I look at like one of the things I brought up with Alex the other day was, I saw something, I think somebody posted on Twitter. It was a news article about NASA saying that you can expect, you know, a possible internet outage <laughs> for five months due to solar flares. And I'm not going to get, in, get into the ridiculousness of it, but I saw that as a, we're preparing you, we're getting you afraid for something that could happen. And interestingly enough, less than a week later, there were, I saw a lot of like internet outages throughout the country. It was kind of random, but it got me thinking if there was no Wi Fi, there was no cell service all of a sudden, what would you do? And how would you be able to communicate with your loved ones? Like, if you go to work for a job, like, what would you do? How would you contact work and say, you know, do you need me to come in? Like, Think about how much we rely on this technology. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, me being me wanting to learn everything about everything, I started thinking, okay, well, what would I do? And I thought, I'm just going to sit in the house, you know, and, and probably, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Venture out, go check stuff out for myself. But, you know, I, I can't worry about it too much because whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah, you can't really worry about it. And when I say like becoming energy independent, it's also realizing that there may come a time where you're not going to have all these amenities that we've all been so spoiled by. And then when I say that, I mean like video games, TV shows, all, you know, all that kind of stuff, Netflix, all the, your streaming stuff. If they kill power or if they kill the internet or the sun kills it, come on, if you buy that nonsense, please. I got a bridge in Brooklyn I can sell you. Uh, when If they do that, I mean, it will be chaos because it's not going to be, oh, I just can't, I can't post on Facebook or look on Twitter or Instagram. It's not that. You're, you're not going to be able to go to the store and purchase something with a debit card because everything goes on the internet. Mm -hmm. Everything, all those transactions, people that have their own businesses, a lot of solo entrepreneurs, uh, small business owners that rely on the internet, on social media for their business. That's their business model. Those people are going to be fucked, screwed. You're not going to be able to communicate with people because if there's no internet, yeah, you can't, you can't send a Facebook message to somebody. You can't use your cell phone. You can't do you know, all these things. It will be fucking chaos. And you're telling me you saw an article saying it, there it could be up to five months. Yep. And you're, t uh, oh, so let's just say that was legitimate. Let's say that was the case. That was actually real. It's not, but let's just say it was. You're telling me that they wouldn't have some, if they weren't behind it, that they wouldn't have some kind of a contingency plan Thank in you, place. You just said it. Are you telling me that, that, they know enough that it's coming, but they're not going to prepare to make sure that everything doesn't go to shit, please. Okay. And if anybody, if anybody's wondering, well, what do you mean the sun, the sun can't cause it? I'll tell you why the sun won't cause anything. Because most of the cables required for internet, ladies and gentlemen, they don't come from the fucking sun. They're underwater. Okay? They're underwater. That's what connects the internet everywhere. 
It's wires and cable. It has nothing to do with the fucking sun. Or the satellite. Okay? Or satellites or anything else. It has nothing to do with it. So get your heads out of your ass and fucking think, please, if you believe that bullshit. Anyway, I digress there. I apologize uh, for but, that little outburst. But. Again, the point with that was they create a problem right of course and then they'll create a solution and then they'll, and they'll present the solution too yeah exactly and it's never a solution that benefits anybody no, it's only a solution that. that gets you out of the mess they put you in in the first place mm -hmm. and now you've given up some kind of a right some kind of a anything mm -hmm. but you never come out of the situation for the better yeah. somebody else does and that somebody else is usually the one that caused the fucking problem to begin with yep so but when anyway. you can spot that, when you can recognize it, at least you have that advantage. Yeah, exactly. You can better prepare for it. You can become less dependent on those systems, become less dependent on somebody else and for that's everything. It is a good thing to be a jack of all trades. That's right. Absolutely. Learn and how to like build stuff yourself. Learn mm -hmm. how to grow your own food. Learn how to hunt. Learn how to fish. Learn how to do things to be self-sufficient so you don't have to depend on another person. Wean yourself away from the technology as much as you can. It And, and as long as it's available, use it, of course, because it does make some things easier. But don't be so dependent on it and let me you throw can't out, do anything without it. Let me throw out one more suggestion. Utilize books and magazines because if the internet goes down or the power goes out, you will not be able to look shit up. So for example, a lot of people use an app. It's like a plant identifier. I have one. It's freaking awesome. But I also have books because I have to, what if I don't have internet? I need to be able to learn about trees and plants and how to tell if something's poisonous or if it's safe to use. So invest in actual tangible books. There are like magazines out there talking about herbal medicine and they have recipes and what kind of plants you can use and how to identify them. Take advantage of that stuff because worst case scenario, you have something tangible that you can always look back to, but also in a pinch that something happened, you have it and you don't have to worry about, oh no, we have no internet or we have no power. And now I have no way of finding this information out. Exactly. Exactly. But I think that's the big thing. If there's brownouts and all that kind of stuff, people are going to be like, whoa, what, what do I do? What do I do? Don't panic. Don't panic. That's number one. And, and before that does happen, get to know your neighbors. Yeah. Get to, get to meet like-minded people, get, get communities started, like get back. We got to get back to that. We so have to get back to that. But uh, yeah, I, I just be ready. Because some, something's coming, something's gonna happen. I don't know when. I hope not, but and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I, I hope my the, feeling is wrong. I hope, I hope the your better feelings timeline are wrong. comes through. Yeah, I just hope that there's not any I'm trying to manifest yeah, that. I, I really manifest a good timeline, as you call the timeline. Manifest that reality for yourself, because you can't rely on other people to do it for you. Just there, that is never a winning situation. It's never a winning scenario. You're never gonna win that way, never. And pretty soon you may not even survive if you're doing it that way. So anyway, pretty, pretty uh, somber note to end on there, I guess. And kind of grim. Well, that's why I said going back, jack of all trades. It's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it is. It is a good thing. You're right. That's definitely a good thing. And this is why <laughs> the past, what, hour has been, this is why. There you go. Before there you we go. close out, I just want to put out there for everyone listening, I my next group hypnotherapy session will be on Sunday, July 23rd, Eastern time. I believe it's at noon. It's for a group stress relief. I'm going to be talking about how to, like, I'm going to be talking about stress, how to manage it, how it affects us as people. And then I'll do a nice little hypnosis session where you go get comfortably into hypnosis, learn about what causes your stress, how you can or sense it from when it's starting to approach you and how to stop it from affecting you in a nice little hypnotherapy session. So check it out July 23rd. You can go to my website, understandingshypnosis.com to learn more about it and to sign up. And you're, this is, again, these group sessions are a fraction of a one-on-one -on -one session. So take advantage of it. 
There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Get outside. Enjoy yeah. some sunshine. Yeah. And speaking of that, I, I need to make more Organite. But if you're interested in Organite or tarot reading, you can go to my website, tarotbymonique.com. I've been working on some awesome full body dragon pieces. Yeah, those things are cool looking. Yeah. Absolutely. I know it's hard. It's like, I, I feel like they look way better in person. I, like no matter how hard I try to get pictures, good pictures don't do it justice. It, thank you. Yeah. That's, that's a cliche, but it's, it's true. I'm biased, but still it's true. On that note until next time. And what are we going to talk about next time? We're going to be talking about home education. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of questions around that. I'm sure uh, people have heard us talk about it before. So we figured, you know what? Let's do a show about it. Let's talk about our experiences, how we got to the point where we decided this is what we're going to do. Uh, and we'll we'll share some personal stuff, some yeah. challenges we've had, uh, some big wins we've had, and things like that. We'll we'll get we'll get uh, as detailed as as uh, we can without giving up too much of our privacy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I I think it, it'll be good just for anybody that maybe is thinking about taking that step. Or if you have taken that step and maybe you're having a tough time, maybe hearing about some of our wins after having a tough time will we'll help encourage you and keep you on the path to. Or hearing uh, about some of our bumps in the road might make you feel better. Like you're not alone. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it is, it's not an easy thing. Um, I, I, or I should say it's a simple thing, but it's not an easy thing. Uh, it, it definitely requires a commitment and uh it's i think for the best for oh, the best yeah. for, be for the best uh for your kids and absolutely and, uh we'll get into it i think uh we'll get into a lot of that stuff next week and i think it'll be beneficial for for a lot of people and and even if you don't have children it, it may, you know someday maybe you will uh, you could still hopefully pick something up from it and learn something from it so yeah. all right until next time i am Alex, and uh, it just feels weird not saying the Golden Greek. I know. So I'm just going to keep saying it. What the hell? Until next time, I'm the Golden Greek Alex Arion, joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing wife, the lovely Monique. And you've been listening to the Homewrecker Podcast. <laughs>